Okay, welcome everyone to our, our 13th webinar in the IPERG webinar series. Um, this afternoon or this evening, this morning, uh, wherever you, you're joining us from, uh, I'd like to go and uh, welcome Sonia Baldi from um, ADAFSA, the Abu Dhabi Food Safety Authority, uh, to go and talk to us about the integrated risk management framework. So Sonia has a master's degree in agronomic sciences in the areas of biological and integrative management and uh, has a, a long history in herbicide resistance and, um, and working in developing the, the integrated risk management framework uh, based on risk analysis. And um, on that note, I'll hand over to Sonia and um, please take it away, Sonia. Thanks. Actually, one thing before we begin, yep. if you've got questions, you can, we'll have questions at the end, but feel free to pop them in the chat. So yeah, if you've got questions as we go. Thank you, Melanie. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, first, I'm, I'm very glad to join the International Pest Risk Research Group community by delivering this webinar session number uh, 13. I'm also uh, so thankful to Melanie, Darren, and uh, Frank to, uh, 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 to organize this uh, webinar series and to make it happen uh, for me today. To, uh, Frank, uh, Frank is not with us, he is in vacation. Uh, uh, as, as uh, Darren introduced me, I'm Sonia. I'm, uh, I'm now my, my job pos uh, position is best risk uh, uh, analysis specialist in ADEFSA. Uh, to uh, who uh, doesn't know uh, uh, the context in the UAE, ADEFSA is in fact the uh, 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 Abu Dhabi Agriculture and uh, Food Safety Authority. Uh, it is the governmental uh, entity responsible for agriculture, food safety, uh, food security, and biosecurity in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. Let me also uh, mention that Abu Dhabi is one of the seven Emirates that make the United Arab Emirates. Uh, today, uh, my uh, webinar uh, session is entitled Best Risk Register and Integrated Risk Assessment Tool for Ad ADAFSA. I will be talking. Um, yeah, I will be talking about the following uh, topics: uh, general ADAFSA policies for agriculture and food safety, the main strategic uh, policies, integrated risk management framework, the corporate risk register, rapid response plans, pest risk register, and uh, finally risk assessment for the main pests. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, let me just, uh, uh, good morning again, everybody. And uh, let me just mention that everyone uh, should kindly unmute uh, himself uh, because Melanie is uh, registering the uh, webinar. So uh, let us start with the general policies for agriculture and food safety adapted by, uh, ad adopted by ad 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 ADAFSA. We have uh, many, uh, uh, many uh, policies, but I choose to talk about the uh, main seven ones. I hope that everyone can see this slide now. Um, Melanie? We can the see presentation, Mubahar, presentation not open now. Yeah, we can't um, see the presentation. We can currently see your screen, but it's showing emails. Yeah, okay. showing uh, emails uh, only, yes. I will share it again, yes. This is it. Yes. Yes, it's okay now. Yes, it's okay now. Thank you so much. So I said that I will uh, talk about the main uh, policies uh, adopted by ADEFSA uh, regarding its uh, mandates and uh, missions. So let me mention uh, first that uh, ADEFSA is responsible for agriculture uh, sector in uh, around 24,000 uh, small scale farms. So uh, uh, the number one policy integrated farm to fork a food chain approach uh, is uh, helping ADAFSA to deal with the risk uh, 
uh, the many the risks re related to the food change. As you all know, uh, we can have risks related to agriculture import, to agriculture and to plant and animal uh, production. Also, we can have risks related to uh, processing, to manufacturing, to distribution, to uh, 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 retail, and also uh, risks related uh, to uh, import and export. The second one is called Integrated Risk Management Framework. I will be talking about it uh, in detail in the next slides, but it's a, a tool based on risk uh, assess on the on the on the risk uh, is a, a risk based tool that uh, uh, make Adafsa uh, sure it is taking uh, that it's taking its uh, decision on a strong uh, base. Uh, in, uh, concerning, uh, as I said, uh, all the risks re related to plant, animal, and uh, uh, human health. The uh, number three is good operating practice and HACCP principles. Uh, 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 let me mention that ADAFSA is uh, quite newly established in 2017, and upon its establishment, ADAFSA would like to, uh, to make sure uh, uh, it's uh, it, that all the sectors and departments are uh, 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 practicing uh, uh, or are uh, 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 operating on good on good uh, practicing system. So we are adapting many HACCP uh, principle and also ISO accred accreditation. Uh, credibility and capability is a strategy that uh, uh, adopted that is adopted by Adafsa to make uh, to build, in fact, the confidence between Adafsa and its stakeholders and partners, not only inside the UAE, because as uh, I mentioned in the first in the inter introduction, uh, uh, Adafsa is uh, responsible for uh, agriculture sector and food safety sector in uh, the Emirate of, of Abu Dhabi, but we have other em em Emirates in the national scale. So we have many stakeholders inside the countries and outside the, 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 the country. So credibility and capability is a strategy to uh, build strong co confidence with uh, this uh, third parties. A transparency through consultation and the communication also is uh, uh, one of the main policies and practices in ADAFSA. Uh, it's also uh, adopted to uh, 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 strengthen the, the confidence between uh, ADAFSA and the customers and uh, the, stakeholder, uh, the stakeholders regarding the different uh, services that are uh, delivered by ADAFSA. Uh, consistency with WTO and TBT and other international uh, uh, agreements like uh, or uh, uh, agencies like Codex, like uh, IPPC, like OIE are, is also adopted by Ad ADAFSA. Uh, num uh, number uh, number seven is research and development. I, I choose to uh, mention it here because really great work is done concerning research and uh, development. We have a whole uh, department uh, for, for this. And uh, research and development is in, in fact uh, uh, um, a basis or is a, a basis for risk assessment since the gaps that we discovered during the risk assessment uh, studies are filled by uh, research and the, the development, and it, this makes ADAFSA uh, pro uh, progressing well in its uh, mandates and uh, tasks. Uh, let's uh, let's go a little bit uh, deeply uh, in. Uh, talking about strategies and, uh, and the priorities. So we have mainly 10 strategic uh, prior priority. They are linked to each other, as I will uh, explain later. And uh, uh, these 10 priorities, uh, of course, they cover all the missions and mandates allocated to ADAFSA. As I said, but let me uh, uh, say it again, Again, uh, we have uh, agriculture uh, sector, animal and plant uh, production. We have uh, food safety, 
food security and basic security. These are the four main uh, uh, fields of action of ADAFSA. The number one priority is focused agriculture support and development programs. Since ADAFSA is, uh, uh, as I said, is, is supervising agricultural activities in the Emirate, so uh, a big a big work is done to support the uh, farmers in uh, many ways i can uh, cite here or i can mention here the uh, hay distribution program as you all may know uh, here in uh, the uae the climate is uh, arid and uh, also we have a problem of salinity so it's hard to uh, provide farmers with the uh, uh, necessary or with adequate quantities of hay. So uh, ADAFSA is uh, uh, exporting hay from, uh, from outside the country and distributing it uh, according to uh, uh, a detailed program. Uh, number two priority is uh, con concerns the strengthening uh, of the effectiveness of the biosecurity system for the prevention of diseases and pets. A lot of work is done here since uh, since uh, many years ago. Uh, in ADAFSA, we have a committee uh, 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 formed by uh, experts uh, uh, to supervise the biosecurity uh, system. Uh, we uh, this committee developed many strategies, and they are now working in collaboration with uh, FAO to develop. Uh, uh, key drivers and uh, key, indi key indicators regarding the uh, prevention of the introduction of plant pests and uh, animal diseases also. Excuse me, Sonia. Uh, yes? You're not going through the slide pack, so we're, we're only seeing slide two there. Uh, oh, okay. uh, so perhaps if you I put it in presentation mode. Yes, I put it on presentation mode. I will go back to the first slide and I will go here. And now it's appearing or not? No, we're still seeing slide two okay. in the editing mode. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, I think I only have to stop sharing and share and share again. So uh, let's make it ra uh, rapid and uh, yeah. Now that's fine. I'm still seeing uh, slide two in edit mode. Melanie? Well, everybody also? Melanie's it's got the same. same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Um, So, um, okay. Um, now? Same. Okay. Um, what I will do, I think I will stop sharing. It might be an internet issue, uh, even if uh, internet is working well. So, um, um, yeah, a presentation will facilitate for the for the people who are here. So uh, I will try to do it again. I don't have any yeah. other. Uh, yeah. Sometimes there are different options for what you share. Are you getting any yeah. options when you do screen sharing? Uh huh. Uh, still the same problem. Still have the same problem. Yeah, same yes. problem. Okay, I will try to share differently. Yes. Bravo. Yes. It's coming now. Yes. So 10 strategic priorities. <coughs> exactly. Perfect. So uh, uh, let me say again rapidly that for the 10 strategic uh, priorities, I chose to talk about it to go deeply on what I say in the slide before. So we have 10 uh, priorities that uh, cover all the mandates allocated to ADAFSA, covering the agriculture, uh, plant and animal and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, sector and food sector also. The number one, as I said, is focused on agriculture support and development pro programs. 
Uh, so ADAFSA is, uh, is uh, uh, supervising the agriculture uh, sector. So it is uh, one of the, uh, of the uh, uh, tasks or missions is to, uh, uh, to support farmers with their uh, needs, with their in, 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 uh, input. I cited, I talked about uh, the uh, hay distribution program as an example, uh, because as you, uh, as, uh, you know, Adafsa climate is arid and uh, we cannot provide uh, uh, farmers with hay that is planted in the UAE. So Adafsa is exporting and distribution and distributing the hay to farmers. The number two strategies is talking about the biosecurity system. I said that we have a committee uh, for biosecurity, uh, uh, that, uh, which is working in uh, a close collaboration with FAO to develop uh, uh, the uh, uh, drivers for uh, uh, and key indicators and the strategies uh, in order to uh, prevent the introduction and spread of plant or animal diseases within the uh, Emirates. Uh, the number three uh, priority is optimizing the duration role uh, in uh, agriculture and uh, food. As you, uh, to go a little bit quickly, priority number three and priority number uh, six, which is, which is strengthening policies and legislation. So both of them are talking about the regulatory uh, role that ADAFSA is playing in the agriculture and food, and food uh, uh, system in the Emirates. So we are uh, uh, both department of uh, regulation and uh, policies are working on international uh, basis to uh, uh, make it, to make sure that all the, the regulation and uh, policies uh, uh, respond to uh, the uh, stakeholders, farmers, and partners' uh, needs. The fourth, uh, the number four priority is improving uh, and facilitating uh, government uh, services and procedures. As I said in priority number one, many services are uh, they're delivered to uh, customers. So we are working on, uh, we, call, we call it here in the UAE, the seven stars, customer service program to improve the uh, services, uh, services that are delivered to the customers. Number five is improving research and the statistical databases for development purposes. Here, a great job also is done on the, uh, uh, in, uh, for the de Department of uh, Statistics. We are now uh, working on uh, uh, developing uh, a unified uh, dashboard uh, which will uh, regroup the uh, many, we have many like softwares and application and statistical pro programs in each department. Now we are working on regrouping them in one dashboard to uh, make it easy for uh, ADAFSA employee and especially for risk assessors to get quick access to statistical uh, 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 reports, which will enhance the uh, risk assessment uh, uh, work. Uh, so number six, I talk about it. Number seven is discrimination in internal processes to ensure quality uh, services. This is re related to, uh, uh, to the uh, 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 IMS, uh, uh, IMS the documentation because all the documentation is uh, also ac uh, accredited in ADEFSA. Uh, number eight also is a favorite one for me, empowering human cap capabilities. ADEFSA uh, is uh, doing great job here. We have a, a training a program for uh, all the employees according to their uh, needs. And we are uh, uh, receiving uh, uh, tra uh, training uh, from uh, international bodies like FAO, WTO, and also well-known universities. Priority number nine, having secure facilities and integrated information system also. This is belonging to people from IT department and these uh, uh, things. Uh, the number 10 uh, priority is all uh, allocate and use budget optimally. Uh, and that's what we are as risk assessor do, uh, doing while uh, uh, while producing uh, the different uh, mitigation options for the different risks, we are usually trying to uh, have an eye on to how uh, to allocate uh, 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 the budget with efficiency. 
uh, I will move to the next slide and I hope you will confirm to me if it's moving. Yes, working. Uh, I'm good. I will talk now about the integrated risk management uh, framework. This uh, framework is adopted by all the sectors and the departments and the administration in ADAFSA. I will talk about this later also. So uh, on the left side, it's the job of risk assessment and in the right side, it's the work of uh, uh, risk managers mainly. Uh, so we, uh, for any sector, for any department, we usually uh, start by identifying the risk uh, and then the technical expert groups uh, uh, will assess the risk. We'll, we'll, we'll do the, the, the homework. It means we, they, we will uh, do the best or the risk and assessment study. Uh, and of course, we uh, identify, I say we because I'm belonging to the group of, uh, of the uh, assessors. So we identify the risk management op uh, options uh, that time, it's the role of risk managers to, uh, to take the appropriate decision or to make the decision according to other, to many other uh, criteria, as I said in the slide be before, mainly uh, uh, allocating optimally the budget. Then uh, the risk options are implemented in order to reduce the uh, risk. And uh, then uh, monitoring and e evaluation is done by risk assessors and risk man managers to uh, see the, uh, the degree of e efficacy of the, uh, the decision that have been taken. As you can see in the, in the middle, we all know uh, that risk com communication is maintained during all the process between risk assessors uh, themselves because we should or we might need uh, uh, many specialists for different uh, 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 sectors. Uh, also, communication uh, is maintained between risk assessors and risk man 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 managers. And uh, also, we uh, are in strict uh, communication with, uh, st with the st stakeholders in order to uh, build the confidence on how ADAFSA is taking the, de the decisions. I will move now uh, to the, uh, here the, is the same uh, components of the uh, integrated risk management framework. Mainly here I summarize them on four, on four steps. So uh, prim, uh, the, the preliminary uh, activity of risk management, then identification and uh, uh, section selection of risks. Uh, management options, then we have the, implement the implementation of content measures and monitoring and reviewing these measures. Okay, we are now uh, in the second part of this uh, uh, pre presentation. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, the corporate risk re register that we uh, developed in uh, ADEFSA. Uh, it is an uh, ISO accredited uh, document. Uh, in fact, uh, all the, uh, yeah. Uh, we have, like you see here, 27 administrations. So for all this administration, they, they were in, in the past, uh, in the uh, two, uh, two years ago, they were called to identify all the risks related to their tasks. So all of them, 27 administration are identifying the risk and then are, uh, of course, they, they will uh, uh, rate the risk and after they will uh, find management uh, plan for, uh, for them. Uh, I will just take uh, one or two examples here. For example, for people uh, or for my colleagues working on border control uh, administration, so they will identify all they have done it. They identified the risks related to their uh, tasks. As you can, as you know, all risks are mainly uh, here related to uh, the importation or the imports of plant and animal products. So we have uh, plant di diseases and pests that can be int uh, introduced. Also, we, we have uh, uh, diseases related to, uh, 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 to the uh, animal uh, products that are uh, uh, imported from other countries. Uh, for example, uh, for our colleagues working in agriculture de development, they are 
people who are uh, putting the uh, pest risk management programs, so they uh, have to identify the risks related to pets, but they have only other risks related to other uh, sectors I can mention here. Uh, treated water. Also, we worked on uh, on this. They mentioned they identify the risks related to uh, treated water and many other risks. So uh, after uh, risks are uh, identified, uh, uh, we have uh, to uh, identify the are to rate risks before mitigation, if mitigation already e uh, exists, and after uh, mitigation according to uh, rating. Uh, rating uh, uh, score going from one to five. Everybody uh, know this, this one. This is officially adapted uh, by ADAFSA and it's also uh, uh, conformed to uh, FAO guidelines. Uh, after rating the likelihood uh, uh, of the risk, uh, uh, we can uh, later on another step rate the control measures. We, if you, you can see a green uh, color here. If uh, uh, the risk is uh, of the control, control is rated, control measure is rated good or excellent. This means that we have uh, already have a, a management option. We already have monitoring program. We have response plans to this uh, risk. So that's fine for uh, uh, those uh, mentioned in uh, green, good and uh, excellent. For those mentioned in uh, in uh, uh, red, it's an uh, an adequate and not acceptable risk. So here, uh, all the work is done here for each admin administration. We are uh, uh, continuously working on how to manage the risks that are uh, highly rated. As I said. Uh, uh, in ADAFSA also, we have many response, <coughs> uh, sorry, many rapid response plans regarding many, many sectors, many uh, uh, tasks. Uh, I choose to talk here about the risk, uh, the response plans to epidemic agriculture pests. Uh, we have a plan that is elaborated uh, in close collaboration with the different uh, partners here. Uh, for pests, we, uh, as I said, ADAFSA is working in collaboration with, for example, environment agency, with uh, uh, police services, with uh, municipalities also, with uh, 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 waste management uh, uh, companies, and also with Ministry of Climate Change and Environment, uh, which is the, uh, 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 the the focal point of the UAE concerning the agriculture and animal uh, work uh, with uh, the international uh, uh, agencies. So, uh, as I said, the responsible uh, the response plan is composed uh, is containing all, uh, all, also uh, worst case scenarios. And uh, for example, here I put the. Uh, uh, screenshot for uh, efforts done to control the desert locust. So, uh, um, as you know, we can have invasion of a locust from our neighbors, uh, from the, the borders. So uh, every year, in like this time in April, our response plan is ready to uh, uh, to manage the risk of uh, desert lo locusts in case they uh, come from uh, the other uh, countries. And now I will move to talk about the pest risk re register since I'm a pest risk uh, assessor. So uh, this uh, register uh, is, uh, is uh, developed uh, according to uh, uh, IPPC guidelines. So uh, also, once again, we work as a, a risk assessor in close uh, collaboration with risk managers. And we put uh, a list of like 120 uh, pets. They don't have all the same uh, uh, severity, uh, but uh, we are trying to, uh, we start already our work on priori prioritizing uh, the, uh, the, 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 the work. So number one, uh, uh, we worked on the main pests and diseases of palm date. 
since fund date uh, or date palm trees is the main crop in the UAE, then we uh, have uh, uh, developed risk assessment studies for some pests and diseases of stored grains and dried fruits. Uh, here, because uh, uh, the, the, the role of uh, UAE in general as a re-exporter of uh, stored grains and uh, dried fruits. So uh, it's very important for us here. Uh, pests and the diseases of vegetables, we are, we are working on them also since uh, ADAFSA is uh, encouraging farmers to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, 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 to vary the plantation of vegetables as well as for uh, uh, fruit trees also. We are in introducing a new species, for example, fig trees olive trees also, but as you all know, if you introduce uh, new plants or uh, uh, trees from outside, we also should, uh, uh, that should uh, do the uh, risk assessment uh, work in order to uh, provide farmers with the right uh, risk uh, mitigation options for the pests related to these uh, imported trees. Also viruses of vegetables, we are working on them. And uh, the, uh, 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 the last one is the quarantine pest and diseases. We try as much ma as, much as we can to, uh, to don't forget to work on them because they don't really exist in the, in the Emirate, but uh, we uh, sometimes have a threatening pests, especially those who uh, are already in uh, introduced in the neighboring countries. As I said, also uh, prior prioritization is made according to the uh, uh, triangle of disease. Everyone know about it. So we have to consider the main hosts or the main crop plants here that will be host for uh, the pests. Uh, the, the pathogen, the pest itself, its requirement in terms of uh, environmental uh, uh, con conditions also. Uh, so as you all know, date palm uh, is the main crop in the UAE. Uh, I have here some uh, statistics. So uh, in Guinness book, you can have this uh, statistic, uh, 42 million date palm tree in the UAE. What, in certain time, it was the largest number uh, of uh, palm, uh, date palm trees uh, worldwide. In Abu Dhabi, we have now uh, uh, 5 million, uh, more than 5 million, 2,000. Uh, producing palm trees. The number of farms I as mentioned before is very big, is reaching 24,000 farms, but mainly they are small scale uh, farms. And uh, production of uh, date palm is reaching 260,000 tons. Uh, I, I put this, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, slide to mention that uh, it's very nice, very nice to have palm trees everywhere as a patrimoine here in the UAE. You can find it in Burj Al Arab, you can find it in the uh, Burj Khalifa, you can find it in the Seven Stars Hotels, uh, in towers, in roads, etc. This is very nice, but as we are going to see on the next slide later, it is also, uh, it's, it becomes a, 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 a source of, 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 uh, of uh, uh, let me say it's difficult to manage all these palm, palm trees and especially for pests related to, uh, to it, mainly red palm weevil. Uh, the main palm date varieties in the UAE, uh, we have many, um, many, like more than 100 maybe. Uh, the <coughs> The most produced and most uh, 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 ones that we can find in uh, the market are Khlas, uh, Bahri, Lulu, Fard, Khnezi, Shishi, Sagi, Khadrawi, and Mejhul. Maybe uh, uh, people uh, from USA and other countries are looking directly to Mejhul variety, but let me say that Mejhul, unfortunately, is not. Uh, wide planted here in the UAE because for this variety, it needs a little bit more humidity, more than the other varieties. But here in the UAE, 
um, we can't provide uh, or uh, uh, a climate uh, um, uh, conditions cannot be uh, uh, adjusted to majhul needs. So not a few, uh, few number of farms uh, contain majhul uh, variety. So let us move a little bit now to talk about the, um, in fact, uh, meteorological conditions that uh, also uh, 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 are maybe uh, uh, good for some pets here as we are going to see it later. So as you all know, the precipitation in the UAE is uh, very low. In the maximum case, is reaching 150 millimeter in the coastal uh, part, as you can see in blue in the in the figure uh, on the left. As you can see in in, in blue, is the is the maximum is 150. So that's uh, that's will be uh, conditioning the uh, varieties of plant pl vegetables and trees that will be uh, planted in the Emirate. On the right uh, hand, on, on the right side, we have the soil uh, soil map. So, uh, without going into details, uh, soil soils are arid, and uh, also we had a big problem of salinity, which made the uh, majority of soils inadaptable for agriculture activities. This is also a problem uh, uh, here. So let's us move also to the temperature. Uh, all of you know that uh, temperature is, is, is very high. In the coldest month, it's reaching 66 Fahrenheit, as you can see here on the figure on the, on the left, going uh, or reaching 100 uh, Fahrenheit in August. The uh, figure uh, on the right show, show it uh, in other way. So as you, can, as you can see, along the year, we have like warm, hot, and sweltering on very hot climate. So uh, let me um, let me connect this with what I want to say. This, this was an, uh, an introduction. I want to say that uh, this uh, may environmental conditions make it may some pets are adapted to high temperatures in summer. So red palm weevil is the well known pest. You all know that uh, uh, Rancophorus frigidus is. Uh, the main threat for palm dead. It is here since 25 years. So it is well established and I continue to make uh, uh, infestation. I report here the, inf the, the infestation by red palm weevil uh, registered from 2018 to 2021. As you can see, uh, the infestation is getting <coughs> uh, quite low. Uh, because uh, let me mention that uh, uh, red palm weevil is one among six pests that are managed by ADAFSA. This means that ADAFSA is supporting farmers with the uh, traps for the, for the de de detection and also with chemical co control and uh, technical support al also. These efforts make the infestation of red palm weevil going uh, uh, down and down. And also in 2021, we uh, review this pest by adapting the risk analysis uh, study. And I think that uh, uh, the mitigation options that we, we, we put and that uh, risk management uh, uh, adapt uh, are giving a good result. Between the other pests that are also managed by ADAFSA, we can find the longhorn palm dead stem borer. This is also a very uh, severe, uh, uh, it's also a pest that making very severe infestation rates. As you can see, uh, infestation is um, reaching 7% and it is not reduced because of many uh, factors, mainly, uh, uh, Longhorn palm date stem borer uh, uh, will be spread in those farms who are not well maintained. Because despite of the effort made by ADAFSA to encourage farmers to entertain, to, to, to maintain the, their, their, their farms in a good health uh, status, but uh, we, uh, some of them just abandon the farms because of uh, uh, water becoming too uh, 
or salinity is becoming very high, etc. So uh, longhorn beetle is re related really to those farms who now are considered as a source of infestation for other farms. Uh, two days before or on, on Thursday, last Thursday, I visit some farms and I found really a, a big infestation rate uh, by longhorn palm date stem borer. Let's move to another uh, pest. I'm just mentioning here some, some pests. The pink hibiscus, hibiscus mellibag also. Uh, before 2000, 2019, this pest didn't have uh, any uh, major infestation, but after that, also because the uh, uh, bad maintenance of some farmers, this become a threat. Also, we develop, we made the risk assessment study and we uh, generate some risk mitigation options that start to be taken by the, by the risk man man managers. And <coughs> as you can see, infestation uh, is now uh, getting uh, lower. So I just here, I will just uh, mention some pests. Bospodoptera frigiperda, everyone knows about it. I will talk about it later. Uh, tomato leaf miner, some uh, bacteria like acetose greening, uh, liberobacter. Some viruses also are, uh, uh, we, can't we can't find the them, especially in indoor conditions in greenhouses where a uh, high temperature and uh, high hu humidity make it easy for this pest to uh, develop rapidly. As I said before, we uh, also uh, try to work on some pests that are not here, that are quarantine pests. Uh, uh, I, I mentioned here by youth disease, Fifizarium of uh, date palm. The tomato brown fr fruitigos virus, we are working on, on de developing a contingency uh, emergency plan uh, right now. Also, Xylella fastidiosa, as you all know, it's, emerg it's uh, an emerging uh, pest now. Uh, we don't, we are not, we don't do any uh, work, uh, not yet, but uh, it is pro programmed for 2022. Uh, as I said, I'd, I will talk a little bit about fall armyworm, which, which was first detected and officially um, uh, reported on 2020. Uh, the first year, the infestation were, rate was, uh, was, a very, uh, was very high. Uh, from the from the beginning, and uh, of course, we uh, try to develop a risk uh, assessment study according to international guidance provided by the I, the IPPC. And let me mention also that uh, uh, ADEFSA or UAE joined the uh, global uh, action that is uh, conducted by uh, FAO to uh, to. Uh, uh, to prevent or to uh, uh, have the good response plan for Spodoptera frigiperda. Yes, uh, as I said, the infestation rate was high from the beginning. Uh, as you can see, the number of farms is, uh, uh, so we have here 337 investigated farms and 329 of them are infested and so on for the 2021. Uh, for 2021, after uh, also our colleagues in the risk in agriculture development administration, they deploy uh, many uh, control measures and they work a clo close collaboration with farmers. So the infestation is getting quite low, but uh, but uh, uh, work is ongoing. Uh, especially to uh, uh, to provide uh, farmers with the adequate knowledge about the scouting and the observation and the early detection, with it, which is an important step for controlling Escudaptera frigiperda. As you can see here, maybe <coughs> the first number here is the total number of farms appro approximately. And you can see that the number of infested farms or investigated farms is very low. But let me mention here, this is the question I asked myself for my colleagues, to, to my colleagues. And let, uh, let me mention that the uh, mice is a uh, favorite uh, 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 plantation or crop for farmers. For farmers. 
it is uh, giving them a best in income. So they try to not to, uh, to, uh, to abandon it. So that, 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 that's why uh, even if the number of farms is, uh, is low, the number of uh, superficies also, <coughs> or the area planted is, is quite low regarding the whole superficy, agriculture uh, superficy, uh, the, the total one, but ADAFSA, as I said in the prior priority, ADAFSA is usually encouraging and supporting farmers in uh, the uh, sectors on the plantation or the choices they, uh, that they uh, made. Uh, we also uh, try to uh, work on the available uh, program on Power BI. We develop some, map, some maps and models for the infestation uh, of Spodoptera frigiperda. As you can see here on the left, we have the total farms, total farms. Uh, so, and then we have the infected farms, the, then merged infected and not infected. Here also we have the same model for 2021. This helped a lot the risk managers to, to uh, be updated about the infestation on the, on the field so that the action uh, or the management plan or the action will be uh, adapted all, all, uh, also in time to the infestation. That's what I uh, uh, report uh, here. So uh, as you all also uh, know, uh, these are the components of the uh, integrated management uh, program for, for NMUR. So the monitoring and the use of traps for observation is very, very important step. As I said, ADAFSA team <coughs> is supporting uh, farmers with the knowledge concerning how to discover the uh, uh, early. <coughs> Then uh, the scouting also uh, is done by, not by the farmers, it is done by ADAFSA agriculture ex uh, extensionists. Then uh, according to action th threshold, thresholds, yes, yes. Uh, according to action thresholds, we are uh, applying the uh, insecticide, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, appropriate insecticides. Uh, for the biological control, in fact, it's not uh, yet uh, uh, adopted in the UAE. We are working on a co collaboration program with FAO in order to, uh, uh, to implement uh, the infrastructure for the <coughs> rearing of the uh, 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 bi 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 biological control agents. So uh, I will talk a little bit about the chemical uh, control. So uh, our uh, team, uh, since the appearance of uh, Spodoptera on the farms, they are trying to use many different uh, active ingredients, especially those who are effective uh, against uh, Lepidoptera spe species. So uh, we, uh, we uh, use uh, perithrome, we use deltamethrin, we use and, and uh, regarding uh, some in some sites we are using one pesticide in other sites, sites we are using two pesticides as you can uh, see here this is uh, uh, this is related to the stock I, I think this is has nothing related to the efficacy of the uh, pesticide or no so uh, it's written in Arabic but as you can see here uh, the infestation, uh, or in the next slide, I think, in this slide, is uh, here uh, we report the um, mortality of the pests, because, you know, after uh, uh, insecticide control, uh, after the insecticide appli uh, application, uh, the field team go back to the farms and try to uh, to uh, do statistics about the, mor the mortality. You can see the mortality was high and the uh, control, the, the uh, chemical control was very effective in some sites and was quite effective in others. But I think that uh, for uh, red palm, for uh, Spodoptera frigiperda, uh, uh, as well as for um, um, red palm weevil, we can uh, manage uh, these risks, but uh, 
we are, as I said in the beginning, we are working in close collaboration with the research and development uh, department, with the statistic de department, with the IT department also to, uh, to enhance the work of risk assessment by introducing a new components uh, like a software right, pro, pro, program. This all uh, at the end will, will help uh, ADAFSA uh, in uh, providing good services to uh, its uh, farmers and the stakeholders. And I say this is the, uh, one of the major priorities for ADAFSA. I just finished my, uh, my presentation. I, I, I hope that it, it, it was uh, clear for, for everybody. I thank you all again for your attention. And uh, the floor is yours, Melanie and Darin. Thank you so much, Sonia, for that, that wonderful and engaging talk. Uh, I haven't seen any questions from the audience yet, um, so I'll sneak in a, a couple of my own, if you don't mind. Um, so given the relatively small size <coughs> in area of, of Abu Dhabi and the trans-border nature of the pests, so all of your pests that, that you've listed, um, you know, they're, they're occurring and threatening throughout the UAE and probably the, the whole Arabian Peninsula. Um, uh, I was just wondering, have you, are you engaging in trying to get cost sharing with the R&D gaps? So, and, and also the pest risk assessments. So I, I, yeah, are you talking to the other Emirates and, and other, other nations about how you can share the, the costs of the R&D gaps because they can all benefit from that same yes. information? <coughs> yes, exactly. <coughs> Thank you for this permanent remark and question. Yes, in fact, as you know, we are a federal like uh, Emirates, but of course we are working all to to together, supervised, as I said, by the Ministry of Climate Change and Environment, which is the uh, contact, the focal point uh, regarding the, the international uh, organizations. Uh, and also, uh, uh, as you said, for PES, there is no border, PES don't don't know the border. So if um, efforts are done here, management plans, response plans are done here, but not on the other side, we are not going to, uh, to, uh, to uh, benefit uh, from nothing. Uh, so we have a committee called uh, Invasive uh, Pest Committee. We are working now since one year ago. Now we are uh, generating the first annual uh, report. We worked on a strict collab collaboration regarding pests for the <coughs> sorry for the red palm weevil uh, i think in all the other emirates we are adopting the same management plan but for example for spodoptera frigiperda that is uh, till now only registered or uh, reported uh, in abu dhabi only so uh, we prepare uh, also uh, response uh, plans uh, for the for the other uh, 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 local government in case they have the best. We are sharing with them our experience regarding the management of Frigiperda, uh, of uh, Spodoptera Frigiperda. And you know that uh, that's right. In fact, there are many, uh, many, uh, many challenges, but uh, I'm very glad to have uh, this uh, uh, committee. Uh, it, it, it is called Invasive Plants Co Co Committee. It's formed. And uh, uh, results uh, will be will be uh, really uh, uh, perceived in the in the in the real life, inshallah, soon. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and I forgot to mention at the beginning of my, my my question there just the observation that I'm so impressed with um, how sophisticated your system is. Um, okay. it, it, it's it's an impressively tightly integrated. Um, system. Yes, thank you so much. That's why I'm. I'm not. The first slides were, were was uh, were talking about the priorities and the strategic uh, uh, prior policies. I uh, I'm also very happy because uh, uh, I hope that uh, uh, IPERG will have the opportunity opportunity to visit us here. 
uh, you will uh, really perceive this uh, this uh, 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 integrated management uh, work as I mentioned it in all the departments. So uh, so it's uh, it's uh, as I said uh, since its establishment at Adafsa uh, was uh, conformed to international uh, uh, guidelines and to the international uh, uh, also uh, work. So I I would like to mention also that we have a board of experts uh, composed of well worldwide known experts. I can mention Dr. Uh, uh, Steve, uh, Steve Hathaway. So uh, this is also, this is a good uh, scientific support for us uh, in order to, uh, as I mentioned, one of the strategic policies is uh, 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 credibility and, uh, and uh, also um, uh, the consultation. So the, our, our consultants are uh, uh, worldwide recognized ones. <laughs> right. Okay. So, Melanie, I can't see any other questions yet. I had one. I just wanted Please. to ask the Spodoptera, that can be a migratory species. Do you know whether you have? like established populations that are permanently in your area or is it migrating from somewhere else? Yes. Uh, let me say that the first introduction was uh, for sure coming uh, with the importation of, uh, of uh, maize from, uh, from outside the country. And you know, uh, here in our border, we have uh, our neighbors like Oman, Saudi Arabia. So we have many um, uh, uh, a change, like uh, families are going and coming, like we have uh, a close relationship with those countries. So the first introduction was from the outside, but <coughs> but now uh, is, is, uh, is established here in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. Uh, we have two plantation seasons, so in each season we can find the Spodoptera. That's really, in fact, we are trying to keep the traps on the field of maize to see where Spodoptera is hidden in, in uh, outside the maize crop uh, uh, season. So uh, uh, that's it. I hope that I respond to your question, uh, Melanie. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, it, it is a remark from uh, Roger Day, I think. It's not yes. a question. Yes. Right. Okay. I, I have a question. So I noticed that <laughs> in the list of responses that you had, you know, the control options for fall armyworm, you didn't mention um, either BTK or entomopathogens. I was just wondering, is that is there a reason for that? Yes, I in fact put just biological con control because unfortunately we didn't make any survey about the uh, entomopathogenic uh, uh, insects or the other uh, uh, agents that are present because for sure we should have them. Also, this is I will I, I will connect it with another point. Same for red palm weevil. We don't yet make the surveillance about the uh, biological control agents that should be present in the farms. We are trying to work on this. We maybe we still don't have the uh, the needed uh, infrastructure and uh, experts mainly, but uh, we are not forgetting it because it's a very it's a, it's very important to discover or to find out what are the species. <coughs> Is especially and the indigenous uh, uh, control uh, agents that are present in in uh, in uh, in the perspective of rearing them maybe and uh, and working on that uh, uh, area. So we we had a question in the chat from Roger Day asking about the mechanism for updating the pest risk register. And Roger, you can add if you've got anything more to say. 
Yeah, the pest risk register, in fact, as I said, oh, we, uh, we, uh, the, the, the component, uh, so the, 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 the component, the likelihood, the, uh, the impact, uh, all of those uh, criteria are the same, I think, for, for any uh, uh, risk assessment uh, frame, framework, they can find them in FAO also. But what, what, what we've done is we sit with the uh, agriculture department, agriculture development department, and we try to find out a list of the pests that exist in the, in the you know, if the pest exists in Abu Dhabi, it exists in the UAE, especially for established pests. It's, it's not true for Spodoptera, but it's 90% true for other pests. So we, we put a list and we start working, we start developing risk uh, assessment studies for those pests, starting by the, the, the priorities. Our priority in the UAE in Abu Dhabi is the pests related to pandate. Maybe like Longhorn, it's present or at Palm Weevil many, many years ago. But the uh, risk assessment study was an opportunity to review the risk management option and to, uh, and to advise and to ad advise some new studies, maybe a new kind of traps, a new kind of pheromones, uh, other techniques like the, the detection with uh, electrical de 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 devices and vice versa. So uh, this is, uh, and of course in the study, because I didn't show the study, inside the study as any risk assessment study uh, published by, uh, by EFSA or APO or uh, elsewhere, you can find the, the rating of uh, likelihood, the impact, economic impact, the social impact, uh, the environmental impact, and then we have an overall assessment of the of the pest in a score uh, in a scale going from one to five. Of course, till now we have red palm weevil uh, is the is uh, getting the uh, the most uh, <coughs> the high score number four or number five, I, I think. And, uh, and uh, after the part of assessment, the last part is uh, risk management. As risk assessors, we review the risk management plan and we, uh, we try to go on science to see what other countries are doing, what are the new techniques, what are the new approaches to control the pest. We advise them, we put a list of, uh, of uh, options and we transfer this work to risk man managers who will take the right decision according to, uh, as I say, the budget according to many other criteria. So now, now this into 2021, we develop like six uh, risk uh, assessment, best risk assessment, uh, assessment. And uh, now also we have like three or four for this year. Um, uh, we are sta starting with working on Oligonicus afrasiaticus, which is the uh, uh, old world mite. Uh, so uh, this pest exists here in the UAE, but now it's uh, the impact is getting more and more high. So we would like to see uh, if Adafsa can provide farmers with uh, with uh, with uh, with so support. So we need first to to make the assessment and then to generate the risk of the, the risk of options. This is the same uh, what happened for the pink hibiscus mellibag. As you can, uh, the, uh, as what we can deduce from here, is sometimes we have pests already established, but there are many conditions, climate, climate, uh, climate conditions or many other conditions that make that one, uh, suddenly the infestation become high so that time we go rapidly to an express uh, PRI and uh, generate the uh, risk option, uh, mitigation options. Okay. That's it. Okay. I, I have many other questions to ask, but um, I think I'll ask those offline. Uh, okay, I think given the timing, you need to go and say thank you so much, Sonia, again for that that wonderful talk, that wonderful presentation. And we look forward to, uh, to hosting you and everyone else on the call in Athens in October. 
uh, at yes. the, the annual IPERG meeting, and we'll have an opportunity to go and pursue uh, these you know, these questions and, uh, and topics. So thank you very thank much. You, uh, Melanie, is there anything else we should add before closing out? I don't think so. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Much appreciated, everyone. Keep well, and we'll catch you next month. You too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.